Hello, and welcome to Mr. C's Game Strategies. I'm your host, Mr. C, and today we're going to be playing Cribbage. But first, before we get into all of that, uh, if you'd like to learn more about card game and board game, board game strategies, please subscribe to my channel and click the not notification bell, and you'll get all of my latest updates. Also, please look at your the top right-hand corner of your screen. You should see a playlist there of all my card game strategy videos. So let's get into it. The first thing to do in, in Cribbage is you select where to cut the deck. Okay, so I lost the deal. So my opponent is dealing first. Now, the key to Cribbage is to set yourself up for uh, scoring combinations. Uh, pair of cards, uh, pairs of cards, uh, threes of kind, that sort of thing. Uh, also, a combination of 15 also scores two points. Uh, so, in this hand right now, I'm going to be uh, selecting two cards for the, for the opponent's crib. Um, generally, you don't want to give your, your opponent uh, good cards for their, for their crib. You'll see how the how the crib works as we as we go along here so i'm going to uh, i don't want to really pass the nines or the tens because that's pairs are scoring combinations if i pass the the queen and the king there's always the possibility that the jack would also be in their crib um, but that the queen and the king don't score by themselves so i'm going to pass those So the opponent being the dealer, they get what's called the crib hand. Um, so they will have four cards in that crib from which they can, they'll also score points. Now I select the cut. Okay, queen. Now, the way you score points in cribbage is uh, scoring like I said, in combinations, uh, 15, a total of 15 scores two points, uh, pairs score two points, but you, it, it's, you'll just see as we go along and play. Generally, you would not want to lead with a 10 because, of course, then a per, uh, your opponent could play a 5. That totals 15 for which they would score two points. So I'm going to play a 9. And so my opponent played a 3, so the, the total is up, now up to 12. 31 is also a scoring total. So as soon as I played the 10, which made it 22, my opponent played a 7, which made it 29. I have to say go, because you cannot make the total count go uh, above 31. So I have to say go, and my opponent scores a point for that. Once again, don't play the 10, play the 9 instead. Okay, he came back with the 4, and he got one point for playing the last card. Okay, so my hand scores 4 points, So because I have two pairs. My opponent scores two points for the, the pair of cards that he has, the two sevens. And in his crib, he scores eight points. The reason for that is you also include the top card on the discard pile in, in your scoring. So he gets two points for one five, for the five and the queen in his hand. He scores another two points for the five and the queen that's on the top of the discard pile. He scores another two points for the king and the five. So that's six. And he scores two points for the pair of queens. I'll show you the details just so you can understand the scoring. So 
So 15, 2, that's the queen and the 5. 15, 2, another 15, 2 for the king and the 5. So the way you would say it is 15, 2, 15, 4, 15, 6, and the pair is 8. So let's deal. Now it's my crib. Now, of course, I want to have good cards in my crib. So what I might do is I might put aside in my crib the pair of tens. Okay. So my opponent has played a four, which I will play a four on and score two points for the pair. He played a six. To bring the total to 14, I'm going to, I think I'm going to play the jack to bring the total up to 24. 26, I will play the two to make that a pair. Opponent says go because he, he, can't, he can't play. Um, any card he has to play would put the total over to 31. And I have to say go as well. And so I get a go and the last card for one. Opponent's hand scores six. Because the six and the nine is 15. The nine and the four and the two is also 15. And 15, two, 15, four, oh yes. And the two and the six and the seven also make 15. So it's 15, six. My hand scores two for the pair of sevens. And my crib scores four for the two pairs. Now you see, uh, you mark the score on the cribbage board. Um, so it appears that my opponent is slightly ahead of me, 18 to six. Let's play one more hand. Now two two cards for the opponent's crib. I think... Well, I'll get rid of the three. I want to keep the run of three. I think I'll want to keep, keep the run of three, so I'll throw away, uh, throw away the three and the jack. And since my opponent dealt, I get to cut and that's going to be the top card, six. So let's play the nine. Nine and two is 11. I'm going to play the eight for 19. And he played the eight for the pair. And I can't, I can't play anything that I play would make it go over 31, so go. And go for one. So I will play the seven. You don't want to play the five, remember. And he has a seven, so that's a pair. And he gets two points for that. And play the five. And the last card. My hand scores nine points. The reason for that is that, well, the nine and the six is 15-2. The 8 and the 7 is 15, 4, and I get 5 points for the run of 5. That's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. And the opponent's hand scores 7 points. The 8 and the 7 is 15, 2. The 7 and the 6 and the 2 is 15, so that's 15, 4. And... The six, seven, eight makes a run of three, so that's three points, so that's a total of seven. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, short video, uh, giving you some uh, brief brief tips on uh, how to play the game of cribbage. But let's uh, let's just briefly review. Number one, you don't want to lead uh, tens or fives to set up the possibility of your, your opponent playing a card to make the total 15. You want to keep... Uh, good combinations for your crib 
and you also want to keep good uh, scoring combinations for your hand. Um, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please like, please comment. I, I don't claim to be the world's greatest expert on anything. I just really, really enjoy card games and board games. But I want to make this uh, sort of a community of people who are willing to share their, their strategies for these, for these games. I don't claim to be the world's greatest expert. Um, but the other thing I, I, I want to say, too, is, I, yes, I absolutely want you to like, comment, and subscribe to my videos. But I would also consider it very successful if the first thing you do after watching this is get up off your computer, get up off your device, um, go to your family, break out a deck of cards, and play these games. And, and just really enjoy spending time with your family using these games. Um, so anyway... I, once again, hope you've enjoyed the video, and we'll see you next time.